Hey everybody and welcome back. So it's Sunday afternoon and I was going through all my emails and I got a really interesting email from what I call a young kid, 22-ish I guess. And he's been designing a lot of his own airframes and you know he likes the flight test stuff which is absolutely kick-ass and he designed an airplane uh, that he just says lands horribly and he's trying to figure out why and he said, you know, everybody at the club just says that he's not a good pilot because landing is easy. Just takes practice, stick time. So he sent me some pictures of his airplane and it, and it made me realize exactly what's going on. And I thought I would share this with everybody because I'm not sure how many people know this. But um, I'm going to digress first, as I always do. One of the things I've done over the last 40 years is collect a lot of plastic models that I use to demonstrate different things in. Like this is my B-58, uh, my F-104. This is an old Hawk kit, believe it or not, from the 50s. I uh, got my X-15 here. Uh, I got a 707. Uh, of course, I got my Viking, which you've probably seen me use this before. I've got my B-1 bomber with the swing wing. And then to round up all the airplanes I use, I've got my A-10, uh, which loves to kick ass. So the reason I have all of these is they all have a little bit different flying characteristics. But so do the way airplanes land, okay? One of the things that really, um, I hate to use the word anxiety, but one of the things that gets me excited is when somebody says to another pilot, oh, that's easy, you just need to practice. Well, what if it's not easy? What if, you know, practicing is making you just try to overcome a problem in a design? Okay, so GB. I love using the GB as an example of an airplane that has a very interesting characteristic in the way it lands. Okay, so if you look at the GB in a profile, kind of like that, and the CG is about 26% back, I think, or something like that. Uh, maybe 28. And then you look at where the wheels are. The wheels are just barely ahead of the leading edge. So what does that mean for landing a GB? I've had three friends have GBs, and they have had me fly them. And this sounds egotistical, but each of the three GBs I greased right on. And they were dumbfounded. They're like what are you doing? I can't land the plane without it bouncing and almost tearing itself up. So I want to, I want to show you a phenomenon that happens. If you're landing an airplane with the landing gear way ahead of the CG, okay, tail dragger only, this does not apply to a, a tricycle. When those wheels touch down, the weight transfers aft. So what happens when that weight transfers aft? Your angle of attack just went up. And if you're still at a flying speed, the airplane's gonna take back off. Instinctively, most people wanna push the nose down. Wrong, because now you're gonna hit a little bit harder and cause a bigger angle of attack. It's not the suspension causing you to bounce. I call it reflying the airplane, <laughs> okay? So landing number one, number two, number three, it's your angle of attack that's causing the wings to start flying again, okay? Some airplanes have the main landing gear really close to the CG. Well, those planes tend to nose over. So if you're designing an airframe, you've got to decide, do you want to be closer to nosing over or do you want to be where you need to do a three-point landing where you really got to slow the plane down and it's not flying, okay? Now, if you're flying a tricycle landing gear, you got two wheels back here and one wheel here, you could probably be coming in ballistically and as soon as the wheel touches down and you lower that nose, the angle of attack's gone down and the wing's not flying anymore. Most people don't realize it. And if you read the book about the X-15, which I'm dyslexic, so I listened to the audio, um, I mean, audible book. The X-15, one reason they had the skids all the way back here is when it touched down, they had a really beefy long oleo nose gear. They wanted it to instantly drop to kill the angle of attack so the wing wouldn't be producing lift on the X-15. So I'm going to show you a video of my MSL. Um, uh, let's see, where is it at? Here we go. So this is my MSL-2 landing. Now I overflare here, which I always do in this airplane because it's got such a light wing load. But watch what happens when I touch down here. Angle of attack went up and I'm flying again. 
Now it quits flying and I land. Let's watch that in slow-mo. So I'm coming down. And right as I touch down, watch my angle of attack. Watch the nose. It pitches up because the tail drops right there. Look how much my nose went up. That's not a bounce. That's my plane reflying. Okay. So let's watch it here. And I'm going to freeze it for a minute. And I want you to look at where my center of gravity is versus my landing gear. Because my landing gear, the wheel's almost at my leading edge of my wing. So right here, look how much difference there is between my CG and wheel. Okay, that's the reason the MSL2 needs to have kind of a full stall landing when I land it. So, the intent of this video is just to give you some things to think about. I'm not going to say this is going to work for you. I'm not saying go out and do only full stall landings. If you've got a high wing load P51 and the landing gear is a little bit closer to the CG than on a GB, you could probably just do a regular, what I call a main gear landing. You touch down on the mains, you hold the tail up, you roll it out until the tail sets down. But look at the airplanes that that's easy to do. The only person I've ever seen do a main gear landing in a GB is Delmar Benjamin, who flew the full scale one, and he had hundreds of hours in it. He was an expert at the GB. Um, I would never try to do a main gear landing in a GB because I think I'd end up beating the crap out of the airplane. But every GB, every GB I've flown, knock on wood, I've greased it in because I've done full stall landings. However, if you got a really high wing load GB, you may not be able to get the angle of attack high enough to get a three-point landing without the wing stalling. Okay, so I want to show you another quick video here. This is my MSL2, and of course I overflare again. Overflare, and now watch when I touch down. It doesn't leave the ground. Perfect three-point landing. The tail wheel touched with the main gear, and that is textbook. So let's look at it again. Now, one reason I overflare this airplane, everybody, is it's got such a light wing loading. I mean, the, the cube wing loading on this airplane is in between a glider and a, a sport plane. And I always want to grease it on, but I'm still going a little bit too fast. And I always land with power, and I'll explain to you what that means in a minute. It's kind of cool to watch my simulated exhaust firing there in my exhaust pipes. A friend of mine, Berger, helped develop the controller for it, and I put together the uh, LEDs and the MOSFETs, and it's actually really cool. And you can see it very good during the daylight. And here's my touchdown. A little bit of suspension movement, a little bit of a wing. Uh, you can see the wings kind of unload there, and the plane's not flying. Okay? So, I've had so many people say landing is easy if you just practice. If you've got a trainer with no wind and you've flown that, let's say, 500 times, you can probably land and it is easy, okay? But if you go from airframe to airframe or if you're a designer or a maker and you don't know exactly where to put that landing gear and you've got that landing gear a little bit too far forward in a tail dragger, you could get into that bounce big time. Okay, if you got the if it's a tricycle gear and your main landing gear is too far aft, as soon as you touch down, all the weight's going to settle and it's going to plop down on the nose, which might not be a bad thing. I have noticed though, the farther back the uh, main landing gear on a tricycle is, the more it wants to call what I call wheel barreling, which means it wants to tilt easier than if the wheels are closer to the CG. Now I want to show you this video. Now, this video is part of a series I did about stalling my wing. That's the reason the yarn's on the wing. But watch when I touch down how most of the wing stalls right there. Okay, we're going to watch that in slow motion now. So, here's what I'm... I was experimenting in getting full stall landings. Okay, where the wing is not flying. And every one of these landings, I overflared a little bit because I'm trying to get truly full stall landings out of this airplane. It's just got such, I mean, that's 6,000 square inches of wing, folks. 61 pounds. 188 inch wingspan. <clears throat> Notice the inside of the wing starting to stall first. And go watch my video about this wing because the, I wanted the inside of the wing stall first. That way I had a little bit of aileron control. The wing's really starting to stall. Now watch how my suspension works here because this plane quits flying. And look at that suspension. I mean, it really does a kick-ass job. Okay. Now we're going to watch it again. 
on another landing and this is called a hang on a minute i want to explain this to you real quick this is an aggravated stall landing so basically what happens is i get it down to the ground where i think it's ready to stall and right before it stalls i give a bunch of up elevator plant the tail wheel on the ground and then let the front of the airplane come down okay now i would not do this unless you really 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 know your airplane and know your suspension and know you're not going to hurt anything okay so here we come in and you're going to see my nose pitch up above the horizon a little bit right there boom and look at that suspension take that landing here it is slow motion you can already see parts of the wing are starting to stall uh where the uh Flow is starting to separate just because the yarn's all moving around. Right there, I pitched the nose up real hard. Notice I've got a little bit of right aileron cranked in, which is making the left wing drop. And the left suspension does its job. I mean, I really flatten that suspension out on this. And like a dummy, I didn't have any right rudder in to counteract that. But keep in mind, the plane was exactly straight out in front of me. I could not see that it was yawing um, when it was landing because I'm not in the cockpit. So I hope this makes sense, everybody. I'm just trying to share with you my experiences and food for thought. Okay, your mileage may and will vary. If you got a heavy P P51, a lead sled, I wouldn't try for full stall landings. I would just land it. But if you're wondering why sometimes your airplane comes in and it starts doing this, chances are your landing gear is real far forward and you need to be getting more of a full stall landing. Get, try to get it as close to it quit flying right as you touch down. Because if you come in ballistically and try to land it and get a pilot-induced oscillation started, that's where you can beat the crap out of your airplane. You should just add power and go around. Okay? So I hope this makes sense, everybody. I'm just trying to answer some emails. And because, you know, here's a fact about flying model aircraft or even full-scale aircraft. Taking off is like 10% of your skill. You know, you add power, use a rudder to track straight. As soon as the plane's ready to fly, it takes off. Full-scale, you already have your trim set for it to climb. Model aircraft will just give a little bump of up elevator and it's airborne. Yanking and banking takes virtually no skill. A chimpanzee could probably do it. Um, gerbil, chimpanzee, hamster, whatever could just maybe keep it going straight. But landing can take more than 100% of your skills. And that's when you hurt airplanes. You just didn't have the skills to land it. Um, <clears throat> I still have some really horrible landings sometimes with airplanes. And even with all the years, 40 plus years I've flown model aircraft, if I'm flying a new airframe I'm not familiar with, I didn't design it, the landing gear might be put on there a little bit wonky, um, you can get into that corner where it's best just to add power and get out of the problem, come back around and try to land again. Okay. So I did a video about 18 months ago called uh, Why is it so hard to land? It was one of my most popular videos, like 20,000 views for a nobody like me. But this video was to try to get people to understand. I mean, just think of all, just, just my, my tools I use to show people how planes work and design. When you look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different airframes, they all fly different. They all land different. They all are different. So don't think just because you've practiced a hundred times on a trainer landing and you've aced it, that you can just say landing's easy. Because landing's not easy. It takes a lot of concentration. Sure, if it's a trainer or it's like my Flex Cessna 170, you can land that with one eye closed, not both. But you get into heavier wing loads, wonky landing gear uh, uh, locations, <clears throat> and it's completely different story. Thanks for watching my videos. Please like and subscribe and have an awesome day. Be safe. Sunday afternoon, take a kid flying. Rock on. See you next time. Bye.